Have you ever found yourself in a relationship that felt like a whirlwind of euphoria only to end up in a world of suffering? I'm Lise LeBlanc and today I'm talking about 10 reasons why getting over a narcissist can feel like such an uphill battle. And at the end of this video, I will explain why romantic relationships with narcissists always end with some type of discard. Please remember that narcissism exists on a spectrum with different subtypes. So if you're dealing with a malignant narcissist or if you're dealing with a sociopath, everything you experience will be even worse than what I'm describing. So let's jump right in. But first, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everyone who has joined my membership community. I truly appreciate you. And if you're new to my channel, please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe. Okay, so the first reason it's incredibly difficult to move on after a relationship with a narcissist is the addictive nature of the relationship. A narcissist hooks you in by flooding your brain's reward pathways with feel-good chemicals. At first, they pull out all the stops to make you feel special, desired, and adored. They shower you with compliments, gifts, romantic gestures, passionate sex, and make you feel like you're on top of the world. And you can easily get caught up in the euphoria of it all. And once a narcissist has hijacked your reward pathways, they will start to pull away from you, causing an abrupt shift in your neurochemistry, causing you to go into a state of withdrawal. You'll feel incredibly anxious and desperate to get that drug back. Here's how this typically works. Once you're addicted to a narcissist, they become uncertain, detached, elusive, so after this amazing period of what seems like genuine connection at the highest level imaginable, suddenly they're no longer interested. They're not sure about you anymore. They don't know what they want and they feel disconnected, disappointed. They start setting more boundaries and conditions. They start cutting you down, blaming you and distancing themselves from you. This throws you into an emotional tailspin. You're probably at this point going to be ready to do whatever it takes to win their love back. Surely this is just some kind of misunderstanding. So you work really hard to try to make them happy and resolve whatever problems they are perceiving or producing. And then they forgive you and things go back to being great. But it's only a matter of time until it all starts over again. This push-pull cycle strengthens the addictive pattern and you become psychologically conditioned to seek out those highs, those rewards, and avoid the lows and the punishments. Once you are dependent on them for emotional stability, they will feel more secure and in control because they know that they can put you in a horrible state of withdrawal whenever they feel insecure and they can puppet you around simply by giving you hope that they will give you a fix some time in the future. And they will when it's convenient for them, when you're catching on to them, when they need something from you. And so you become like their yo-yo. And the longer you let them toy with you, the more you stay down and eventually you can't bounce back up. So even after a relationship with a narcissist ends, you will remain stuck in this toxic cycle of dependency and addiction, needing that drug. And to make matters worse, no other drug will do. You won't be able to get the same pleasure or any real relief anywhere else or from anyone else. The second reason is the cognitive dissonance. As those intense highs get replaced with extreme lows and their love turns to criticism and contempt, the negative shifts in their attitudes and behavior will be blamed on you, leaving you trapped in a maze of confusion and self-doubt. You'll find yourself walking on eggshells, trying to figure out what you're doing wrong and how to keep their good side and avoid triggering their defensive and aggressive reactions. And when the relationship inevitably comes to an end, you'll remain stuck in this maze of confusion, trying to reconcile the narcissist's moments of kindness with their cruelty. You'll end up researching and watching videos like this one as you try to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And while it's important to do this research, 
um, because you need to make sense of it all. It can also become your next addiction and it can also be the very thing that keeps you tethered to the narcissist. The third reason is that you can accept that the narcissist's perfect persona was an illusion. Initially, when you meet a narcissist, they present themselves as your ideal partner, your soulmate, your twin flame. They project what seems like everything you've ever dreamed of in a partner and more. But as the relationship progresses, their facade begins to crumble, slowly revealing their true nature. But this doesn't happen overnight. It happens subtly over time. And as the mask starts to drop, you'll be trying to find logical explanations for all the red flags. Why? Because you don't want to see or believe it. You're too invested, too addicted, too confused. So instead of facing the truth that the person you fell in love with is an emotionally immature, insecure person who lacks empathy and is driven by a constant need for validation, admiration, and control, you reject reality and try to keep the illusion alive. However, once you've been discarded, it will no longer be possible to remain in this state of denial. You'll start to question everything, trying to figure out what was real and whether the person you fell in love with ever existed at all. You will grieve the loss of the flawless facade and the fantasy future you were so invested in. You may find yourself gripped by nostalgia, longing to go back to that perfect illusion, unable to truly accept the reality of the relationship. Number four is your sense of loyalty and obligation. Narcissists will demand your loyalty and test it repeatedly. And even after they discard you, maybe in the worst possible way, you may still feel a sense of loyalty towards them. You may continue to try to help them out and make their life easier, feeling like you can't fail them, even though they've completely failed you. Number five is guilt and regret. Odds are you reacted to the narcissist manipulations in ways that you're not so proud of and you're feeling guilty about certain things that you said or did, wondering if you could have had a different outcome if only fill in the blank. And this can leave you with loads of guilt and regret, which can significantly slow down your healing process. Number six is anger. Eventually, after the relationship is over and the smoke starts to clear, you come back to your senses and you realize that you are manipulated, maybe even abused. And this may cause intense anger. This anger is a healthy part of the healing process, but some people get stuck in it, which can prevent them from accepting, healing, and moving forward. If you need help recovering from a toxic relationship, please consider my toxic relationship recovery program that I linked in the description section of this video. Number seven is hoovering. So just when you start to feel better, a narcissist will send a broken heart emoji, a photo of a great time you had together, a text saying, can we just talk? And maybe they'll ask about something trivial like getting an old toothbrush back. They do this because they want to see if there's a crack in the door. They want to know if they can still get your attention if and when they want it. And they feed off of your emotional turmoil that they're instigating. They may be trying to get you back, but often they just want to re-engage you emotionally to confirm that they could get you back if they wanted to. And if you re-engage in any way, your healing process will be set back. Number eight, after a relationship with a narcissist ends, you might lose faith in humanity seeing red flags and warning signs in everyone. You just don't want to take the risk of being hurt again. So you don't get involved with anyone or you find ways of not getting too attached. As soon as you see any negative attitudes or behaviors, you run for the hills, robbing yourself of the opportunity to create emotional intimacy with someone else. The fact is everyone has some negative traits, behaviors, and defense mechanisms. But in most cases, healthy communication will allow you to repair any ruptures that happen in the relationship so that you can build trust, respect, and a strong, secure bond with each other over time. But instead, 
You may become suspicious, shut down, amplifying your feelings of loneliness and allowing the scars of your past to dictate your future. Number nine is the isolation from your support system. A narcissist will often undermine your other relationships either by creating conflicts with your friends and family, um, portraying themselves to you as the only person you can trust and depend on, or they will infiltrate your sources of support, triangulate them, uh, paint themselves the victim, and over time your support system no longer exists, or worse, they're against you. Reason number 10 is the emotional manipulation and ongoing gaslighting. Obviously, this happens throughout the relationship, but it often goes on long afterwards as well. If you don't go no contact, a narcissist will continuously try to make you doubt your own perceptions and memories, trying to make you and everyone around you believe that they are the victim. And if you buy into this, you may become depressed or perhaps even obsessed with trying to get them back to prove that you can get it right. But there truly is no way to get it right with a narcissist. And as promised, the reason a romantic relationship with a narcissist will always end in some type of discard is because narcissists are not capable of emotional intimacy or of securely attaching to another human being. So once the love bombing stage is over, it's all downhill from there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you don't want to miss my upcoming video on the real reasons why narcissists can't form secure attachment bonds, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And to learn more about the seven types of discards by narcissists, please click on the link above.